The palleting technique I'm going to show now is uh, brush blending on the palette. And what that is is actually taking a base color and loading your brush. And then you're going to add a secondary color by dragging it through the other color on the palette just on one side of the brush, which is going to give you a, a blend like this. And I'm going to use that on this example. I'm going to do some really condensed, quickie chrome lettering using this technique. What I'm going to start with is the sky tones, which would be a, a blue fading down into a white. I'm going to hit all the top sides that would be reflecting the sky tones on these letters by coming in And what I'm using here for a brush for this particular technique is a wider quill. You want something that's going to be able to give the entire stroke at the width you need and maintain a good blend. This is actually a very condensed version I'm doing here. You constantly have to reload your palette and recharge your brush. So what I've put in now is all my sky tones. The next color I'm going to apply would be your earth tone and your horizon. And this gets put on the bottoms of all the letters, anything facing the ground. Because what I'm actually doing here is a prismatic letter. It's kind of peaked in the middle and everything from the one side of the peak faces the sky, the other side faces the earth and the horizon. So I'm just mixing up a nice neutral warm gray and I'm going to just drop a little bit of black into this, a gray black. And this is going to give me my horizon and my earth tones.
and you can come back on all these strokes and actually embellish them. You can put little gradients in all these strokes just to give them a little more of an earthly feel. Doesn't have to be perfect. You want to have a little bit of interplay in some of these colors to give it a more reflective look. Here I'm just kind of having fun with the brush just putting in some loose random reflections. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to get a smaller quill out, a type of a liner quill. It's another hot rodded one that I made where I trimmed it down so it would pull some nice thin consistent lines. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to punch these letters up because with the brush blending you're very limited on how tight you can keep your corners. You're more concerned with keeping the blends consistent rather than keeping your corners tight. So at this point of the game I'm going to come in and just kind of tune the letters up with all the colors that I did use but all with line work. And what this also does is it helps define the chrome by putting little bits of extra lighter shades that aren't blended into certain areas to give it just a nice reflective look. You can kind of see how this kind of punches this little corner up where it was kind of dark. And then just come around. The bottoms of the letters, it helps pick them up a little bit. You can help delineate some of your corners here. I'm going to do the same thing with the sky tones. Now we follow all the outsides of the sky tones with this lighter blue, which does, just helps punch up this side of the letter as well. Just gives it a little more life.
I'm also gonna hit the centers of the convex at the peaks to just clean those up. That takes care of all your tightening up of the letters. The last phase of this is going to be some highlighting using a bright white just to designate hot spots in the letters and maybe some random reflections throughout the lettering. This last application is what really brings the letters home. It kind of makes them pop, puts a lot of life in them. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pick out certain areas where the light would be coming from and actually accentuate those with a hot spot, which is where the light is most concentrated on a curve or in a corner. is kind of like water. It follows a, a trail. It concentrates in certain areas and it kind of flows out until it dissipates. Comes in light, picks up strong, disappears. Just like water flowing in a little gully. Follows the trail, picks up strong, flows out again, almost disappears. Here's a real sharp corner. Your light's going to come down. It's going to catch in this corner and kick to the right. It's going to catch this corner and kick up to this corner. this corner, come down. It's going to pick up strong in this little corner here. It's going to come across. It's going to kick up strong in this corner. It's going to droop down. It's going to catch in this corner and it's going to flow off to the right. If you think about it just like water flowing on a contour, it'll kind of help you understand how light works. And what you'll also pick up are secondary reflections. Could be from anything. Uh, another edge on the letter, small edge, might catch it right in here. 
little in here. And you can just kind of have fun with the reflections. You can put little odd hot spots in a couple different places because it's not necessarily always one light source. You might have a main light source, which is the sun, which gives you all these strong ones. But you might have reflected light coming in from other areas that could give you these secondary hot spots. And then a little trick that kind of looks nice if you don't overdo them or to give it a little bit of a when it comes to the little starburst less is more you don't need too many of them to make the make the point with I've nicknamed this little effect poor man's airbrush you never know when your compressor is going to break down or the power goes out and you might have to be able to execute chrome lettering without an airbrush and I've used this on many occasions and it works out very well. Once you get it down, it's not really that time consuming. And it's, it's a lot of fun. I enjoy doing it. And there you have it. I'm Glenn Weisgerber. I want to thank you for watching. And I hope to see you at the getaway in Las Vegas in October.